to all of my friends and family on the study. It's been a while. Hope everyone's doing well. Can't wait to, well, get started, I guess, here in just a minute. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit rusty, I think, but hopefully I have something or some thoughts to share with you that will be uh, useful and helpful. And as usually, I just want to give everybody a little bit of time to hop on. Um, I think there's a few of us that we're going to chime in. Uh, some some people in the group, I think they're on their way to uh, a conference, or not a conference, we call it a retreat. Uh, the Christmas retreat with uh, unconditional love. And so I guess I'll be seeing some of you there and gonna get to hug some for the first time so that'll be that'll be really fun and i can't wait for that oh hi john hi lois i can't wait to catch up with you guys a little bit after this i don't think it's going to be a too too long of a session um i don't think it'll be 30 minutes or anything like that hey walton hey man good to see Good to see you. I'm glad you're here. Been seeing your Facebook posts and you have been on my mind. I hope hope things are working out. And uh, I'm definitely keeping you in my heart and in my mind. So hopefully, hopefully things are okay. So uh, just a, uh, well, a little bit of a, a lighter start. Uh, Aubrey and I, we just got back from our vacation and, um, we went to, uh, Mexico, a little town. Well, it's not little, it's actually, it's pretty decent size. Uh, San Miguel de Allende. I don't know if anyone's been there or not, but, uh, it is a beautiful city with beautiful, buildings and lots of art friendly people and really good food if you like mexican food anyways really good it's all i ate if i went to an italian restaurant i had mexican food true story actually i had the best fajitas i have ever had in an italian restaurant in mexico true story and it was called Mamma Mia. <laughs> yeah. So, man. Oh, Walton. Yeah. Okay, well, good. I'm glad you're getting over over COVID there. Um, it's not fun. <clears throat> uh, so, I'm kind of a mixed bag today, I think. Um, as far as, like scripture goes but i'm definitely gonna I, I really just want to try and focus on hopefully just try to focus on just one one specific thing um and like i said and i think for that reason i i, I don't suspect to go too long uh tonight and uh, well here here's a verse that um I think is it's worth our attention uh, the context of the verse it's in Matthew chapter 5 um, and it's verse 26 but the I won't read the whole thing I'll just give you a little bit of context and then you can you can go in there and read for yourselves a little later if you want uh, but basically um, you know Jesus is talking about you know, if you have an issue with your brother, uh, you know, do what you must to uh, forgive and to be reconciled to your brother, lest you go to prison. Um, and then comes the warning, uh, verse 26. And this I'll read to you. Uh, and truly I say to you, you will not 
come out of there until you have paid up the last cent. And you know, and right off the cuff, it really sounds quite, uh, it, it really sounds quite sharp. Um, well, and it is, it is sharp. Um, I'm not going to say that it isn't. Uh, and I think he, obviously he meant it. He meant to be sharp more than likely. Um, He, he more than likely meant to be sharp. Yeah, I'll just leave it at that. But uh, yeah, so truly I say to you, you will not come out of there talking about being in prison. If you if you end up going to prison, you will not come out of there until you have paid up the last cent. And I, I can't help but to think of this this last payment, this very last payment, in terms of death and resurrection, and uh, and maybe even perhaps ascension. But I don't think we'll go that far. But for certain, uh, death. You know, I learned, I actually learned something uh, quite interesting uh, not too long ago, maybe a few weeks ago, that, <clears throat> that theologians uh, back in the day when, uh, I mean, I don't, I'm not, I don't really remember how far back, I think it was around, you know, like maybe 1,200 AD to like, maybe like 1,700, somewhere in there. Uh, theologians back then used to keep a skull, a human skull on their desk. And the reason why they did was to remind them that they too will eventually die, right? It was just kind of a reminder of uh, let's all be humble here, and we're all just learning. Um, you know, it's just a it's just a way of staying focused on. You know that you're not God, <laughs> and that you're you are little G God, right? And so, anyways, that was just like a little, slight little bunny trail there, but yeah, death, right? A reminder of death. All right, so prison, you'll be there until you have paid up the very last cent. In terms of, like for us, you know, um, things that we're going through right now in life, um, as we are, quote, working out our salvation in the Lord, right? Okay, thanks. In, in terms of those thoughts, we are paying our very last cent. Okay, just just let that kind of settle in a little bit and I'm going to try to I'm going to try to unravel that a little bit uh, with you guys. We all of us are given one life, right? And all of us, so in, in essence, we all have one ticket. We all have one payment. And that one payment, that one cent, 
very last cent, okay, that very last penny is the only thing that we're worth, which is death. Okay, all right, Here, here's the, here's where I'm going to try and connect it. In first, first Corinthians, uh, chapter 15. Listen to this. Uh, verse 22. Okay. Verse 22. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all will be made alive. That was 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse uh, 22. Yeah, 22. You guys have heard it, I'm sure, multiple times. It's a, it's a very, well, I think, I think if you're part of this study anyways, it's a, quite a popular um, verse. And it's a, very, it's, a, it's a very now verse in our minds, um, especially, well, for me. So, well, here's what I'm trying to say, is that you and I are already dead in Christ, and we're all alive in Christ. Where it gets fun is in the acceptance that we are already dead in Him. Where we cease to fight Him in the truth that He's already got us. Okay, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. Alright. Let me reread the verse um, in Matthew. Truly I say to you, you will not come out of there, okay, out of the prison, until you have paid up the last cent. The prison of being bent on living a selfish life, right? The prison of believing in yourself or self-justification, self-righteousness, okay? This, the prison of I am right and you're wrong. Uh, hopefully now, now it's okay. I've, how about this? The example, uh, the parable of the Pharisee and the publican that go to the temple. Um, I don't quite remember exactly where it is off the top of my head, but I'll try to just quickly uh, recap. You know, so Jesus is telling this parable to people that have a lot of confidence in themselves being a good person and so he tells the parable about the Pharisee and the Pharisee gives this prayer offering to the Lord about how you know thank you Lord for making me this good person right that I tithe like I should that you know and also that I'm not like the tax collector over there and then as the parable goes on the tax collector says his prayer and Jesus as Jesus says it he says that um, he can't even like muster up the strength to look up and he beats his chest and says forgive me I'm I'm a sinner
the thing about that parable that stands out to me the most is this is they are both dead they're both dead in Christ both of them one realizes that they're dead and the other doesn't the Pharisee insists on justifying himself before the Lord the tax collector already knows that the game is over and there's no hope other than Christ himself to save him you follow me let me read let me read 26 again okay it's, I think it's uh, hopefully it's unraveling a little bit better for you guys truly I say to you you will not come out of there until you have paid up the last cent see maybe the Pharisee had a little bit longer to go than the tax collector he hadn't quite paid up his very last cent he was still trying to justify himself now likewise you know we do this we do this to ourselves often right uh, when we get down or or you know maybe we mess up or you think oh shoot man I probably shouldn't have done that what usually happens usually we become a lot like the Pharisee and you and we tend to beat ourselves up right We tend to all of a sudden we tend to revert back to what we once believed prior to the gospel, which would have been, man, I lived this long or this many days without quote sinning. And I messed up, so I'll, uh, you know what? I'm going to go to the Lord, I'm going to pray, I'm going to ask for forgiveness, and I'm going to and I'm going to get back on that horse. But you see, like from the from God's perspective, every single son and daughter has already been justified from his perspective there is no horse to get back on you hear that there's no horse because we are dead that makes sense it's, there's a lot of mystery to this. There's a, there's a, a poetic mystery to accepting our death in Christ. And this is also, I'm not trying to say that, that death is the ticket to salvation. No, Christ is our salvation. All I'm talking about here is just... But now that we've become aware of it, is it's it's in accepting our death. It's why we do this. It's why we do the sign, right? Well, I don't know if you do, or or don't. But that's one of the reasons why you you sign yourself. It's the recognition that you are you are dead. You're accepting your death in Christ. <laughs> it's actually it's it's such good news. It's why, uh, as well as what Paul says, right? It's no longer I that live, but, but Christ in me. As Paul recognized his death in Christ, he recognized that he then also was raised with him. And by, n by nothing that he did to, uh, to uh, quote, 
qualify him. Nothing he did qualified for him to be raised or to die in Christ's death. No, that that's all. This is this is the beauty of the gospel is that he did it. We don't pursue it. We don't go praying three times a day and, and Lord help me see my deathness in you. No, that's well, that's not it. Mm -mm. Nope. See, our, our deathness and our resurrection in Christ is a very relational thing. It's very, it's a very present thing. It's, it's not something you pursue. It's not something you pray for day in and day out. It simply just is. It is because He did it. That's how we rest in peace. <laughs> um, or, uh, you know what we saw the uh, last night? We saw a, uh, a Christmas Carol uh, movie, uh, the one with Scrooge. You know, and the in the three uh, uh, the three ghosts, the one of the uh, past, present, and future. And I think it's the future guy, okay? The you know, if you watch the cartoon or if you if you've seen, well, they're all the same, right? Uh, it, the the guy that kind of that looks like the Grim Reaper dude, and he points his bony finger while they're in front of uh, Scrooge's uh, what's it called grave there on top of the grave the tombstone and he sees the date of his death and grave the grave swallows him up or in the cartoon like the you know the the, the future ghost throws him into the grave <laughs> And when he comes out onto the other side, it's like he's a new person. Because he realized he is already dead. Hmm. Interesting, right? I don't know if you ever thought about that or not. Um, I'm not even sure who the original author is of that Christmas carol. I'd be interested to find out. But anyways, okay. So that's what's what that's what was on my heart. That's what I wanted to share with you. I wanted you I want you to know that no matter the struggle, no matter what you've done, okay? No matter what you've done, whether it's been good or not good, neither one neither one qualifies you or disqualifies you you just need to know that you are dead in the Lord and that you no longer live for yourself you now live for Christ that is what it means to be alive in him one more, one more thing. It just kind of popped up uh, in First Corinthians chapter fifteen. Okay, where it says, "So also in Christ all will be made alive." All right. The, when it talks about here that uh, for as in Adam all died. Okay, you and I didn't have a say in the matter of being dead in Adam. You understand? Like, it's something we're born into. We didn't get, we didn't pick if we did or didn't or if we were alive or dead in Adam. Likewise, 
you don't get to pick. You don't, I don't. I don't get the luxury of picking that in Christ all will be made alive. And here's the thing, in Christ, don't read in Christ as in a, as in a belief that I have to muster up in order for it to be true. No, no, that's wrong. Okay, in Christ, it, it's referring to the person of Christ. It's referring the, the body of Christ, the actual body of Christ in Him, within Himself, because of what He's accomplished, because of what He has done, all will be made alive. You understand? Is that He is the objective truth. It is not a subjective truth. This doesn't come, this doesn't become true when you become aware of it. This is a truth that is and always will be. Yeah. Okay. That's it. That's, that's what I got for us, you guys. That's... That is it. Rest in peace. Rest in the Lord. Know that He's, he's got us. That He's going to catch us. That He's with us. Right now. In the very present. Okay? It is Wesley. It is Christ as Wesley. It is Christ as Kathy. It's Christ as Walton. It's Christ as John. And it's it's Christ as Lois. That's the good news. That is what we rest in. We rest in peace in that Christ is our resurrection, is our death, is our ascension. All right. I love you guys. I'm going to open up a hangout room and I, I hope to see you there.